channel. Uh, today we, we will be discussing about Azure Networks and uh, to be specific for the uh, hub and spoke model which we use uh, for Azure uh, Networks. Uh, well, uh, this is the most common uh, model which is across, uh, which is used across uh, cloud platforms for uh, irrespective of the vendor like uh, Google, AWS, Azure itself, Oracle. So most of the uh, big uh, techies and big uh, uh, cloud providers use this model to, uh, you know, uh, have their uh, infrastructure created in terms of networks. So we will be discussing uh, specifically for Azure Networks, and uh, we, uh, I would be uh, letting you know about the details and the integrity about the about the things that we need to set up uh, the Azure Networks. Uh, well, if you like uh, my video, please uh, like, share, and comment, and uh, subscribe my channel. Uh, and uh, I would really appreciate that. So. Uh, First of all, I want to tell you what is a VNet. Uh, well, basically, VNet is the uh, building blocks uh, for the um, uh, Azure network design. So, uh, whenever we are talking about uh, Azure networks, we have to talk about the VNets. Uh, for uh, for every Azure resource, it has to be part of uh, a VNet, right? It has to be assigned a public IP or a private IP. So, if it is assigned a private IP, it has to be somewhere, right? It has to be within a VNet. It is basically a building block, and within a VNet, we can have uh, subsequent subnets of, uh, as the diagram shows subnet one, two, three. So we can have different uh, different uh, subnets uh, which would have their own ranges and which would be part of the the wider range um, that would be part of uh, the VNet um, IP addresses. Right. The, uh, in in this diagram, you can see uh, that uh, there are different subnets. So by default uh, the connectivity between the subnet is open so they have their own uh, udr set up uh, any resources which is residing on subnet one will automatically communicate to subnet two and three and and vice versa so if if you want to restrict that we can have uh, different nsgs which is the network security group i have already uh, created a separate video for that you can you can refer to that uh, well what we can do is uh, i mean but whenever we assign an NSD, it is assigned to either a subnet level NSD or it is assigned at the uh, resource or the NIC level NSD. So currently, I've shown you uh, the uh, subnet level NSD where uh, you can you can um, monitor and filter out the uh, the traffic which is going in and from uh, the subnet resources. In this, uh, in this particular slide, I want to show you about the different uh, uh, subnet uh, tires which we have. So uh, within a VNet, we can have uh, different subnets, right? As as I told you earlier, but how how are we uh, differentiating that, right? So all the all the web servers go to the web subnet, all the app application servers go to the app subnet, all the DB servers go to the DB subnet. So uh, and and subsequently for uh, firewall, gateway, and and, and different uh, uh, there are different level of. Uh, uh, Bifurcation, right? So there are different types of uh, uh, resources that we can use, and that can be assigned to a different uh, type of subnet. So we can have different type of subnet as as per the uh, as per the requirement, right? Now let's talk about uh, the VNet pairing. So uh, any communication which is happening between uh, uh, the VNets. It has to be uh, done once we have a VNet pairing in between. VNet pairing is nothing but uh, the connection between one VNet and the other VNet. Uh, so uh, any any communication which is happening between one subnet and the other subnet within the range, it's already open. Uh, but any communication uh, where a resource from one VNet wants to communicate to another, another VNet, it has to be done once we have the connection in place. And that connection is called uh, the VNet pairing. So the, the basic uh, rule for any uh, VNet pairing is that there has to be no IP overlapping. So uh, subnet one cannot have the same IP address as the subnet one in, a, in, in the VNet two, right? So until and unless uh, there is uh, uh, the, the the IP ranges are different, we cannot set up a VNet pairing. So there has to be no IP overlapping. So there are two types of uh, uh, so there are two types of uh, VNet pairing. One is the local VNet pairing, where the VNet one 
and VNet2 resides in the same region and, and there is a global VNet pairing where the VNet1 and VNet2 resides in a different region. So we have different regions in, in Azure, right? So if, if a VNet1 is in East US and VNet2 is in West US, so if we have a VNet pairing in between, that is the global VNet pairing. But if they if the both the VNets are in the same location, that is East US, then uh, that it is called the local VNet pairing. So uh, in in this particular diagram, it's shown that uh, you know currently we have uh, three VNets, right? So if there's two VNet, we can have the uh, you know VNet pairing in between. But if we have three VNets, uh, for for any communication to happen, we we need to have a VNet pairing in between all three of them, right? So if we want VNet one wants to talk to VNet two, it has to be a VNet pairing between them. And if we want VNet one wants to VNet three wants to talk to VNet three, then it has to have a VNet pairing in between them. So uh, subsequently, if the if the uh, you know number of VNet increases, so that is the problem, right? It it becomes a mesh uh, topology where you know every VNet has to talk to uh, every other VNet, right? So if uh, if that's the case, then we have to set up too many um, VNet pairings, and that's that's an issue, right? So what the 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 uh, hub and spoke models uh, is all about, where what we do is. We a hub in between and then we have a different uh, spokes right it's it's like the star uh, topology what what we do is uh, any communication that is that needs to happen between spokes that uh, that has to go via um, hub vnet so if uh, a spoke vnet one wants to talk to a spoke uh, vnet two it goes to the hub and then uh, the traffic flows to the spoke vnet two that is how uh, uh, it is done and that is how it is basically recommended and it is monitored in that way itself. What basically we do is uh, we basically create the UDRs. So if a, sub v a spoke VNet1 wants to talk to spoke VNet2, uh, the, the second hop would be the hub. So we define those routes and subsequently the traffic flows accordingly. So uh, in this slide, I want to show you about uh, the, the the practical thing, right? So we have we have on-prem where uh, we have all the uh, our data center, and then there's an express route uh, which is set up between the on-prem and the the uh, Azure uh, Azure infrastructure, right? So any communication that is happening from on-prem to uh, the Azure network uh, goes through express route or site-to-site -site VPN. Uh, right and, and and the local VPN as well. So uh, we can we can set up all three, or we, we can we can use any one of them. So Express Route is the is the uh, fastest one, which is used by all the all the enterprise uh, global enterprise um, companies, right? So uh, this is how uh, the the common um, uh, infrastructure look like. Uh, we have a hub. We have different spokes connected to the hub, and then we have Express Route, which is connecting the on-prem to the Azure networks. So uh, any any um, any communication which is happening from the on-prem to uh, the Azure goes via and if you want to enable uh, the communication from spoke to the on-prem, then what we need to do is we need to uh, enable the transit gateway at the hub level. And once we enable the transit gateway at the hub level, the next thing we need to do is, is, is to allow the uh, remote gateway at the spoke level. So if we do these two things, then the communication would happen from the spoke to the on-prem. Uh, currently, Express Route only uh, set up the connection from the hub to the on-premise, right? But if your spoke uh, resources wants to talk to an on-prem resources, I mean OVMs, right? Then, then this uh, needs to be enabled. We need to enable a remote gateway on all the spokes spoke vnet and we need to uh, enable gateway transit on the hub uh, vnet level uh, and in this particular slide i again want to uh, you know reiterate that uh, any ranges that we define at the at the uh, subnet level that should not overlap right so if we have hub uh, uh, vnet and the, the the ip range is the 10.1.00 slash 16 and then we have subnets within that range so it should not overlap with the, any of the spokes right uh, you can you can refer to the vnet2 where uh, we have selected 10.2.00 and and subsequent uh, subnets has their own uh, ip ranges um, from the vnet uh, range itself 
So the idea is to not overlap because if it is overlapping, then it will not communicate between each other. That's the basic, uh, uh, you know, rule for for any communication to happen. So the other slide where, where I want to uh, reiterate is the practical scenario. This is this is this is actually the the architecture diagram which is I've just copied it from Microsoft website, uh, Microsoft Docs. So uh, I want to explain this because this is the most common and the most uh, realistic example of the uh, the Azure network that we have in in a, uh, in in our uh, Azure infrastructure. So so you you can refer where we have on-prem network where we have VM uh, VMs and then there's a, a router which is connected to the uh, to IX Express route and then there's a VPN gateway within the hub virtual network and from uh, the, the only connectivity. Uh, between your on-prem and uh, the Azure infrastructure is through VPN gateway and any connectivity from the spoke uh, goes via hub. So we have Azure Firewall, Azure Bastion and then there's peered network, right? The peered network means that it is connected from the hub virtual network to the spoke networks and subsequently we have Azure Monitor which is which is which should be part of uh, the uh, the uh, hub virtual network where it is monitoring everything, right? So it is monitoring uh, each and uh, 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 every workload, uh, as well as each and every uh, you know traffic which is following. So, so that is how uh, how it is done. So, uh, so if you can see in this particular diagram, there's no uh, direct connectivity from spoke to the other spoke. It going it is going via hub. So any any resource that wants to talk to the other spoke, then it goes through uh, the hub virtual network. So this is the most common and the and and the correct uh, architecture which is recommended by Microsoft and has been used by 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 uh, I mean 99 of the um, you know 99% uh, of the companies that, that, I, that I've seen here yeah. and it is also recommended so uh, I, I think uh, it, it's enough so if uh, if you want to ask anything you can you can comment and if you like my video you just you just have to like and subscribe my channel thank you thank you very much thanks a lot